Android tablets can be had for cheap, and today I'm going to show you how to use one as a head unit and make it look like it belongs in your car. For this project, you're going to need a couple of things. First being your Android tablet. Uh, this is a Nexus 7 first generation. These are cheap. I got this one for 50 bucks on eBay. Anything will work, but these Nexuses are cheap and they work very well. The only requirement is that they support audio out via USB, so make sure you do a quick Google search and verify that. Next, you're going to need a double DIN adapter for your car. So this is for any regular head unit that uses this little plastic bit. And this will hold our tablet and conveniently the Nexus 7 is almost perfectly sized for double DIN, so it makes it a very good choice. Next, our steering wheel controls will be taken care of by the CarPC Joy-Con. This is optional but highly recommended as you do not want to be messing with your tablet while driving. The, there are two models. You have the Joy-Con EX and that's if you have analog steering wheel controls. And there's also uh, another model, the EXD, that's this one. And that's for digital steering wheel controls. So you want to make sure you have the right one. Our car today has digital steering wheel controls, and this is the only way to do it. This is also the costliest part of the build at $80, but it's well worth it. Next up, you're going to want to get yourself a wiring harness adapter. This will plug straight into the car and will make wiring heaps easier. It'll also make it reversible, so if the next owner wants to upgrade or stick something else in, it makes it much easier. This actually came with our double-in adapter. You'll also need your digital to analog converter or your DAC. This takes USB in, and it's made by Behringer. It'll be linked in the description below. Good quality, 30 bucks. Next up, you're gonna need a hub. This one's from Amazon. It was five bucks, and it lets you plug in a slew of devices into your tablet. This is important. This is the on-the-go cable that allows you to plug USB devices into your tablet. You need one of these that are in a Y shape. This allows you to charge and use USB at the same time. Next up, a uh, power adapter. This will step down your car's 12 volts to uh, 5 volts that's used by USB. Uh, this was a regular cigarette lighter adapter that was stripped out of its plastic and lead solders at the end. Anything will work as long as it steps it down to 5 volts. And these second pieces are optional but highly recommended if you have inadequate volume after you're done. This is a line uh, level booster, uh, an amp pretty much, a miniature one that will let you pump up the gain in case you don't have enough volume. On our card this is needed as the volume is quite low without it. And if you are using one of these, you're going to just need a regular RCA cable, the shorter the better. Alright, so the first step in all this is to make sure that your tablet and your doubled in adapter are in size. So you can see here that Ours is almost perfect, actually. There's a bit of lateral movement, but that will be fixed later. The goal is just to make sure that it sits as flush as possible. Now, ours has a bit of a gap because the plastic itself is crooked, but this is about as good as it will get. As you can tell, I did have to grind off a piece of this top plastic. Sandpaper will work, a Dremel will make it much, much easier. So once you make sure your tablet is sitting as flush as it possibly can, you're going to want to move on to mounting it. Now in this case, there is already a little bit of a lip at the bottom that will help seat the tablet. Uh, it's a very small lip so the tablet slides right over very easily, but nonetheless it's there and it'll make this heaps easier. So what we're going to want to do is use some hot glue to make the lip actually sit a little bit higher. That will give the tablet a nice place to sit on and because it's not actually holding the tablet it's just glued to this rough plastic it should last quite a long time and with the secondary support um, that we'll use ink later to hold it it shouldn't move even on the hottest of days before we start gluing we want to make sure the lateral position is correct uh, it matters quite a bit because the ambient light sensor is on the front and if we cover it then we won't have our backlight automatically adjust itself and then you know, won't be able to see anything during the day and it'll be blinding at night. 
So we want to make sure that the camera is just barely protruding. Uh, that way the light sensor has a good sample of light and can properly adjust the backlight. So once we have that lined up, let's just flip it over. Try not to move it too much. Then when your hot glue gun is at the right temperature, you can start gluing. Now we can work on the permanent attachment for our tablet. For this part of the build, you're going to want to drill four holes in each corner. Make sure you leave enough plastic, otherwise they won't hold anything. To secure the tablet, we're going to put zip ties. Um, they use these, you know, holding cables together and such. Um, through the holes are drilled before, and you're going to need two or three of these long zip ties, more if you use smaller ones. I suggest use the longer ones, it'll make it a lot easier. And uh, you're just going to want to put them all together and you can tighten them uh, all evenly. You don't want to tighten them too much and you're just going to want to tighten them up uh, loosely. You don't want to tighten them all the way. Tighten the zip ties, but don't over tighten them. You'll warp the plastic and it won't sit flush with your dash. Just one set of zip ties should hold it tight. And you can start cutting off the ends of the zip ties with some wire cutters. It'll look something like this. And just do the other side and it'll look something like that. Alright, so now we're in the car and it's time to take apart the dash and check for fitment. My rig is already gone and so is my climate control on the assorted cabinets. Now on most of these cars, the dash is held together with either plastic pins or something of the sort. You're going to want to get one of these plastic trim removers. They're cheap, I got a set of them for a couple bucks. And that way you don't damage anything because this is softer than that. So, on this car you just got to start prying up a little bit underneath this trim here. Do it slowly, the plastic is quite old. You don't want it to break. And uh, don't force anything, otherwise it will. Ask me how I know. And uh, you can see one of these clips actually stayed. This one broke already before. That's what happens if you rush this. Uh, we have one more piece of trim. Just pry it right out. Again, another one of these. Uh, these are cheap. You should replace them if they break. They're like 15 years old, so probably will break. These are all from our climate control. Um, and we will be relocating our climate control to down here, um, like it, how it's done on the navigation equipped models. If your car is already equipped with nav, then ignore this step. Your climate control is already in the right spot. If you didn't have nav, you're going to take out your little sunglasses holder, pop that right out, and you're going to route these wires down to the bottom. This is the wiring harness for the radio. This is what the adapter I showed you before will plug into. 
and it'll look factory and it'll be reversible and removable. Don't splice into these wires here on the back of the adapter. That's sloppy and it's almost impossible to fix after someone else has done it. Here's our tablet, all rigged up. It should be solid. This is the, where the camera is. I'm not quite sure if it'll pick up. This is where your ambient light sensor is. You want to make sure this is somewhat accessible to light, otherwise you won't be able to automatically adjust your brightness. All right, so now we can check for fitment. So I'm just going to line it up real quick, and it should pretty much sit by itself. And if I take one of these trim pieces and I quickly put it back, this should give you an idea of what it looks like when it's all done. And now it's time to wire it up. But before we do that, let's get our climate control sorted out. Um, now is a great time to clean it up. Some of these buttons will get yellow and gross and grimy with age. On this E46, there are four connectors to the climate control. So we're just going to put them all back and it should sit here nicely. There is a factory bracket that can be installed here. It's rather expensive for what it does. The climate control will sit flush without it, so it's optional, but um, that's up to you. So we just plug all these connectors back in. And align it. And you can push the cables upward to give you a little bit more clearance. And there we go. And this sits by itself. If you want, you can purchase the bracket. You're gonna have to look around for the part number. If your car was already equipped with nav and your climb control is already there, you have the bracket, you don't have to touch anything. Now let's hook up the wiring harness adapter to all our components and we can do a test run. Now it's time to hook up your wiring harness adapter. This one came with our doubled in adapter. Uh, you can buy these separately. And it's a big help if they come labeled, ours was, and it was correct for the most part. Make sure if it's already labeled, you double check with a wiring diagram that you know it's right. Now we just need to get all the components together and put it together, and then we plug it in, and it's going to sound awesome. So now we can start hooking up our connectors. First we're going to strip off the insulation, and then we're going to tin it up, and then we're going to separate it by pair. On this particular adapter, Green and white correspond to the left side, and purple and gray correspond to the right side. Now, because our output only has a left and a right channel, these other two are inputs, and our uh, adapter has right rear, right front, left front, and left rear, we're going to combine the rears and the fronts, so we end up with only two sets of connectors, and then we're going to plug those two connectors into our DAC. Strip the insulation of all the wires. Twisting them sometimes helps if they're stubborn. Then you can twist the ends so the strands stay together. Now you can start tinning up all your wires. This will make it much easier to hook them up later. Don't burn yourself with a soldering iron, that will definitely ruin your day. When you're done tuning everything up, your wire should look all silver and blingy. We're going to want to set these up in pairs. So on our particular adapter, green and white go together for the left side and purple and gray are for the right side. Ours are labeled and this is a luxury because we don't have to consult a, vi a wiring diagram every two seconds. But it's still a good idea to double check because these aren't guaranteed to be accurate. We're going to be splitting up our wires using heat shrink. So once you have the right pair, you're going to just grab a piece of heat shrink and slip it over the top. This is good because it'll also make it impossible for you to forget to put the heat shrink on before you solder the wires to the connector. 
because we only have two channels, we have to separate our four channels into two. Now, we're going to put our right rear and our right front positives together. So these are our positives. These don't have a black line going down the middle. And I just put a piece of heat shrink over to keep them together and make it easy for us to identify. Next up, we have our front right and our rear right. The negative ones have a black stripe going down the middle, making it easy to identify. We're just going to slip a piece of heat shrink over the top, again, so it's easy to uh, find the pair, and so we don't forget to put the heat shrink on later. Now we can start soldering the pairs together. Again, be careful, the wires get hot, you don't want to burn yourself. Now do the same for the rest of the pairs, and you'll have a total of four pairs. You want two positives and two negatives for two channels, two pairs per channel. Alright, now we have to hook up our RCA connectors. These will plug into our DAC and we'll wire these straight up to our wiring harness adapter. Um, these are cheap, a couple of bucks on Amazon or eBay. They come apart pretty easy. Uh, they're not very high quality, but we don't need anything super fancy. We just need the two terminals. Remember, the positive cables go on the inner terminal, while the negative cables go to the outer terminal. You're going to want to tin the connections on the RCA connectors. Be patient, the terminals won't wick the solder like stranded copper will. It's a good idea to use a vise as the RCA connectors will get hot. It might take a couple of tries before you get it to actually stick. Then you can solder your connection to the RCA terminal. Positive on the inside, negative on the outside. Lower and heat the heat shrink, and then repeat for the rest of the connections. Use a big piece of heat shrink when you're done. Alright, we have our connection soldered up, our left and right, red is right, black isn't. Our power supply will be taken care of by this red wire, this is switched on the accessory position in the key barrel. If your car has a factory amp, this is all nice and easy, you just have to wire up your amp relay trigger and your hot, and then your hot also has to go to whatever else is being powered, like the charger, the Joy-Con, and the preamp. Before we wire up our power, we want to sort out our steering wheel controls. So I'm using a Joy-Con EXD by CarPC, and if you're using the digital version because you have digital steering controls, then you're only going to need three cables. So the red wire off the main harness and the secondary harness. So that's hot, ground, and your communication line. Uh, I cut off the other wires that they got in the way and I can reuse them later. If that's the case, then all you have to do is wire this hot with the rest of your hots and the ground with the rest of the grounds. Our system has three parts. Our steering wheel controls, our charger, and our preamp. 
So we're going to hook up all those hots together and all the grounds together. And we're going to hook that up to the main hot and the main ground on our wiring harness. We already hooked up the relay for the amp to the main switched accessory line. So that way we won't have any issues with it later. If you do have problems later where you don't hear anything, there is a chance you didn't hook up the relay for the amp to your switched power. So double check that. Twist all your grounds from your Joy-Con, preamp, and charger. Make sure you tin them beforehand, it'll make it easier. Then, just melt them all together, and you'll get something like that. Repeat for all your huts. Don't burn yourself. Don't forget to slip heat shrink on the main harnesses hot and ground. Then you can solder all your huts together. Don't forget to heat shrink. Then repeat for the grounds. Alright, so now we should have our hot and our ground all hooked up, along with our left and right channel. The only wires we should have left at this point are our always on, so this is on regardless of the ignition. This we're not actually going to use, I'm just going to cap this up with some electrical tape so it doesn't short out on anything. And this is our communication line for our steering wheel controls. Now if you're not using steering wheel controls, then you can stop here and move on to the next part. But if you are and they're digital, all you need is one wire. And that will hook up directly to this wire on our Joy-Con EXD. And this is our communication line. And we're just going to turn these both up and solder them together. And we will have fully functional steering wheel controls. harness is now done. Our steering wheel controls are hooked up and on this particular wiring harness adapter it was not in the right spot. We did have to remove the pin and move it to a different place to make sure it works with the car. This is where a wiring diagram helps a lot. And now we have all our components including our preamp, our USB charger, our harness for our steering wheel controls that includes two plugs so hot ground and our communication line along with our left and right channels and now we can start hooking things up first you want to grab your Y cable plug your hub into that Y cable and get your DAC and plug that into the hub your Joy-Con is next a USB isn't supplied, but a mini USB can be used and just plug that straight into your hub. Hook up the charger into your Y cable, and if using a preamp, grab your short RCA cable. Plug the main harness into the preamp and the preamp into the DAC. Then hook up your charging cable and your two wiring harnesses for the steering wheel controls. Make sure you actually plug in your steering wheel controls. And now all you have to do is plug it into the car. All right, so now that everything's plugged in, we can do a quick test. And we got power. Serial controls function.
and now we can start putting everything back together. together it's time for the final test and make sure everything works and our projects complete it looks great and I'm very pleased with the way it turned out with the platform being Android, you can install a slew of different performance apps and entertainment apps. Google Music is great because you can have your music wirelessly transfer every time you park in the driveway. Thanks for watching. If you like the way it turned out, make sure to leave a thumbs up, and if you subscribe, you'll be notified every time I put out a new video.